easy to play fast. It's hard to play fast and, and soft. Yeah, because with, with fast, you, it's easy to lose control, and I'm equally guilty of it. But it's one of those things that it just, you know, <laughs> takes a lot of conscious thought, um, and I have a guilty hand that likes to play a little harder, so I have to keep an eye on that one. Um, so, yeah, let's maybe I'll do a little bit of that. So at that point, I'm hitting the little shoulder tone. It's, it's not tuned in an instrument, but I like it just as a, a little something different. And also what I'm doing too, I'm letting this thumb just drift into the shoulder, so I'm not actively playing any notes. <coughs> it helps me keep the rhythm, but I'm not hopefully not actively creating any anything other than maybe just a little bit of beat. triplet roll. So the basic idea is it's a and basically it's, it's taking up two beats so really for me my limiting hand is my right hand this one left hand can go a lot faster, but I have to be able to keep up with it. But it's a, so it's a, so it's a finger thumb. And what's nice is that when I go to strike with my thumb, it sets up for me to strike with this finger. And when I strike with my, my middle finger, it sets up for me to strike with my thumb. So that's what creates that kind of comfortable rocking motion is each strike is setting up for the next. So I never really have to reset because it's already done by nature of, of the strike. Um, so then that's the real trick for the speed. So um, then I just was doing with chords. So <coughs> and same thing, ergonomically, it's a little uncomfortable to get this chord. So oftentimes my thumb drops out and I just get that note. at it, but again, it's just, it's all that triplet stuff, um, and I, sometimes I'll sneak it up here, or um, I'll talk about the crosshand stuff, but, see if I can kind of have to riff into it, I can't just go blazing into it, <laughs> so again, there it is, I'm, I'm tuning in that, getting right where I want it. <laughs>
Patrick Bellington. Am I? Um, that's, I'm not every day though. Really? <laughs> yeah, there's some days. I don't know what happens, but some days I just can't. Yeah. Because you, you feed them music or anything, but it's just. You know, I mean, I was so I was I was raised as a classically trained cellist, so. It's, it's usually not okay to stomp your foot on stage in a classical group. So <laughs> it could very well be that, because I used to, and they said, uh-uh, no stomping your foot on stage. This is classical. Um, so, yeah. Um, so the one thing that I did there that for me is still tricky is the... Um, and then to go into cross hands. And the only reason I go into cross hands is because this, is, this kind of having to reach these two notes is really uncomfortable for me. And it, I feel like it really takes away from what I'm able to do. So and then it's like, well, is cross hands any better? Because that's a little awkward too. But I made one big decision about cross hands. And this was really important. Is that I decided that forever my right hand is going to go under. And it seems like a silly decision. But I was doing a lot of like, like I, was, I couldn't decide. which, And I kept running in. So I said, OK, to, from today on, right hand under forever. So right hand under. So that way I just know that I'm gonna come up and over. And it, sound, it sounds silly, but God, what a big decision that was. So then that is, uh, again, single strike kind of harmonic isolation. So it's an A, a C, and a D, low D. doing that I want to talk about, and again, this is a big hands one, um, I don't really know what to call it. Um, I was jokingly calling it a booty bump. Um, yeah, you can laugh, it's okay. Uh, the, the idea is that when I was, and what I'm doing is I'm trying to bump the ding there, so. in there. So about stuff I haven't done that you have questions on? Yes? Just about the pressure. Is it really light touch? For the harmonics? Yeah. yeah um, and then again, now you'll kind of have to figure out on your own, but for the most part, it, you don't have to be that much. Yeah. It's just, it's more about location, I think, than pressure. And really, it's, you can even be up on your nail. And it's just having the right spot to get it out. Yeah. And again, this is another one that I like to do. Uh, that's a G, and I don't have a G on this. So I'll like a... So the, the pressure, I don't think it's so much about pressure as opposed to like the precise location of where you need to dampen. So you just have Yeah, really, I mean, again, like you can literally just do your nail. I mean, it doesn't have to be much, but just enough to make sure that two things happen when you dampen. I guess I should talk about this. Two things happen. You dampen the fundamental or the whole tone, and then you also dampen the harmonic that you're trying to dampen. So that's, it's a, it's a two thing that happens because you don't want the whole note to ring, and you don't want that one harmonic to ring. Yeah. I tend to go to tips. I think it might be a little uh, crisper. Does that make sense? So, yeah. Before you were talking about the single strike. Yeah, that one I think for me is harder. Um, you are hitting the place when you are putting your nail? Uh, yeah, I'll be, I'm going to be hitting the harmonic that I want to get out. 
So if I want the major one, I'm gonna... And for, for the most part, it's backed out a little bit more on the note edge. Um, I had an opportunity to sit down with a guy named uh, Rusty James, or Ohm Rhythm, if anyone's on the forum. And that guy's a harmonic freak in the, the best way possible. And we had a, like a two hour discussion about harmonic strikes. And he's a big fan of not dampening. He likes to just, but he's also has a long history in tabla, which is, there's a lot of those kind of similar short but tough strikes in precise locations. Um, so it is, it's a little bit of more of a oomph into it, but it's really about being in that precise zone and almost a little bit more on the shoulder. So like, I think last night I did like a, and I went just for the harmonics and single strikes. single finger strike on the halo earlier with that this finger to get the one that I was wafting yeah I just as easily could have singles like dampen it but that one just works nicely with the single strike and it's a little more comfortable so other questions questions about stuff I didn't touch on questions about stuff I did talk about questions about your specific instrument um, yeah about this one mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, Golden Gates yeah, yeah. The melody is uh, quite happier once, mm -hmm. and uh, I just I was just wondering how I can uh, get some minor. Yeah, there's, there's that trick with the. Ah, golden gate. So dreamy. So the trick is 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 to to try to trick the ear by reorienting. One thing that I do is. Um, the low note, the E and the B, and then you go over to the C. That takes it into my ear. Um, and then I'll tell you, there's some harmonic stuff in the Golden Gate that I really like. This note, it's your D, because on the D, then you get an A, which isn't on here. But it's it's very complementary, as opposed to like the C sharp. So that that specific one and this one is one I really like. Play the regular note. So then you get the. That's the one that isn't on the instrument as a fundamental. What's nice is it's just a, a step above the G, so you kind of get just, just a, I think, a really nice kind of different progression on the instrument. Yeah, but orienting around the, and that way you can do like, you can do swarup on that, yeah. Like that's kind of what I was doing. second gen because I really want to find my neighbor, my number neighbors. If Dan Waffles is 333, I'm 338. Pretty close. This is 
uh, D A B C D E F A. Should be nice if that was F sharp. That's uh, the guy that played last night, the hung band. He's got the F one just like this F sharp, and it's very nice. probably avoid that note a lot <laughs> just because it's kind of the odd man out but with those ones again like by avoiding you can then kind of change the texture by just bringing it in on occasion Jazz, but I'm missing like one note that makes it really kind of awkward, an awkward scale. So it is a matter of kind of thinking of who to include and maybe who not to include to kind of appropriate the scale to be maybe its best. Does that make sense? Interesting one though. Nice. I really like that A. concept is that they're not tuned to what we would think of as a D. So if you take one that's D and you take one that's 20 or 30 cents flat, it's going to sound real sour. This will sound wonderful by itself, but if you put it next to something so... So the concept is, this one will sound... But then next to this... So it's, it's, I mean, that's the, the concept of the free integral is that it's just its own unique thing and it's balanced to itself and it is to be played by itself. I'm sure there's some out there that aren't too far off that you can probably get away with, but... I had someone last night and there was loads of people sat around that was, was spot on. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, there's ones, so there are ones like that. Anybody? Yeah, question. You need to think about uh, to get the harmonics as a major and the minor axis. Yeah. So if, if your note looks like this, yeah, you have the long and then the shorter. So you'll find them on both axes, long and short. 